Hi, welcome to Salesforce Training. My name is Tammy, and during this training module, we're going to walk you through how to manage your opportunities using Salesforce. Opportunities are a way that we can track any revenue generating sales deals. Now to view any opportunities that you're working on, you can view them either via the contact or the related organization. So for example, if I know that I'm working on an opportunity and I have a contact that's involved with it, I can simply do a search on the contact, bring up the contact record, and at the, using the top of the screen, I can see all the related information, including related opportunities. This is showing me that Mark Brooks is involved with this opportunity. Another way to view or create a new opportunity is via the related organization. So let's say I know I'm working on an opportunity with my customer, True Build Homes. Well, I can do a search on True Build Homes in the left-hand navigation area, or what I can do is click onto the Organizations tab, and either using my view, which is basically like a filter, My Organizations, I can view all of my customers, or I can use the Recent Organizations list and click onto True Build Homes from here. Once the organization record appears, I'll be able to see the details of this customer. In addition, at the top of the screen, this is showing me related lists. Now, related lists can also be shown at the bottom of the page, but since these pages become quite long, it's best to be able to view your related lists at the top of the screen. These are related details to the organization you're looking at. Now, one of the related lists we see is called opportunities. So from here, I can view any current opportunities that were related to this customer. In addition, this is also how you can create a new opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and click on to New Opportunity. Now because I created this opportunity off the organization record, you can see that it's related to the correct customer, True Build Homes. Now as I create my opportunity, I want to ensure that I fill in as many details as possible. At the top of the screen, we see the first field to fill in is the related project. So what I can do is I can begin typing in my project name, or using the left-hand area, I can look up the project. This is the project that will be related to the opportunity. Next to cer certain fields, we also see a faint icon. If you hover over this icon, it'll give you more details about the field. It'll also give you tips and hints or naming conventions for data entry rules. Underneath the project, we have a field where we should enter the opportunity name. Now, the opportunity name is a free text field. And when it comes to naming conventions, we suggest putting a description of the opportunity as well as, as, well as including the organization name. This will really help you understand what the opportunity is about by simply looking at the opportunity name. This will also be visible through reports. So from here, I'm just putting in a brief description of the opportunity. And I'm also including the organization name. Underneath the organization name, I'm going to include the division. And what you'll notice is next to certain fields, we see a red line next to it. This is showing us that it's a required field. We won't be able to hit save unless we enter details in that field. We can select the type of opportunity. And over to the right, we have a close date. The close date is a required field, and this should indicate when the opportunity will close or anticipate it to close. This field is also very important because when we're running opportunities, we often use the close date. So for example, if we want to see opportunities closing this month, this quarter, this year, we'll be using the close date field. Now related to your opportunity, we also want to enter the stage. The stage represents where this opportunity is at in terms of the sales cycle. So that could include that we're in early stages like prospecting or qualifying the opportunity, or we might have progressed to later stages such as verbal acceptance or 
and once it's closed, we can either set it as sales closed slash grow account, or in the case that we've lost an opportunity, we can set it to close lost. Now, based on your stage, we notice here that it's related to probability. So this should show us the probability of the deal closing. As we advance to later stages, we notice that the probability will increase. We also notice that if our opportunity has closed one, the probability changes to 100, or in a case where we've lost the deal, our probability will be set to zero. So stage and probability are closely related. So I'm going to set my opportunity stage. And as I work on my opportunity, I should be advancing this to the appropriate stage. We also notice when it comes to stages, if we set the stage to close loss, we suddenly see a new required field which is showing us lost reason. So if the opportunity is lost, we should state the reason loss. And this is going to help us with analysis. Scrolling down a little bit further, I can include dwellings. Dwellings should be the number of dwellings, houses or buildings, that this opportunity relates to. Underneath that, we also have quantity. So that could include the un number of units for this opportunity. Now, when it comes to Salesforce, I can use short forms in any number or currency field. So, for example, quantity, I can put in 10K. K represents 1,000, M, million, or B, billion. Once I hit Save, Salesforce will convert that, that short form into a proper number. And then finally in this section, we have an amount. So this should reflect the amount of this opportunity. So I'm going to say this opportunity is worth $100,000. And again, I'm using my short form K for thousand. From here, this is a free text field, and this should include a description of the opportunity. Again, we have hover details, and we can see with the hover details and the help, custom help, this can include product information. So I'm just going to simply put in description goes here. Underneath it, we have a field called next step. Next step is a reminder to remind you of what the current, where the stages, the opportunity is at and what the next steps are. So we could simply say waiting for feedback from Mark. That way, when I'm checking on my opportunities, I can get a reminder of what the next steps are. From here, we have a section for delivery details. So we can tick to show that it's the, de it's the default as the project. We can also include street, suburb, state, and postcode. Now, when it comes to state information, we should be using the two or three character codes when it comes to states. So, for example, for New South Wales, I'm simply going to put in NSW. Where the, we have delivery details, we can also put in the anticipated start date. So, we have an anticipated start date of May 1st. And we can also set the duration that we expect this project to be. Further down, we have requirements. We have a section here where you can enter opportunity potential. So this is great if you can see that there is an opportunity potential for other divisions. This is where you can enter the details. And we're going to be able to show these different divisions opportunity potentials using reports and workflow. From here, we can also enter opportunity products. And again, with each of these fields, some of them have a faint icon, and if you hover, we can see the help text, which will give us some clues of how to enter this field of information. We can enter roof area, and that would be in square meters. And down at the bottom, we can also track external quote references as well as the maximize order number. It's nice to be able to track all this information on the opportunity so you don't have to be jumping from system to system. Once you've updated your opportunity as much as possible, you can click Save. We have a Save button at the bottom of the screen as well as the top of the screen. 
Now I've saved my opportunity against my True Build Homes customer. And as I'm working on the opportunity, I should be updating this. So as the stage progresses, as the close date changes, or if the amount changes, I should be updating my opportunity. In addition to the opportunity, I can also relate activities. So here I have open activities that are related to the, to the opportunity. Open activities are activities that are happening in the future. So this could include meetings that are due to happen, or also tasks or calls. Where we have activity history, we can relate activities that have happened in the past. So this could include emails that have been sent, calls that have been made, or meetings that have been had, as well as tasks. Now when we're working on an opportunity, we often want to be tracking the contacts that are related to this opportunity. So this could be the customer themselves, or a design group, or architects that are involved. So when I choose contact rules, I can click on to new, and I can choose the contacts that are related to this opportunity. I'm going to choose Mark. And from here, I can also choose additional contacts as well. Once I've saved the contacts, I can move on and I can see additional information such as products, notes and attachments, and we also track stage history. So as our stages change, we can actually track information such as the stage, the amount, probability, and close date. We also are able to track the person who changed as well as the date and time that changes were made. So when it comes to managing op your opportunities, and so here are some key takeaways. Ensure that you enter your any sales or revenue generating opportunity within Salesforce against the organization and or the contact. Update your opportunities frequently. So as the stages progress, as the amounts change or close dates change or any other details, ensure that the opportunity is updated. Thank you for attending this recorded training sessions. There are additional e-learning courses available, so please take a look and see what else is online.